Hello, and welcome to the We're Not Stump podcast. I'm your host, Mike Boland, and I'm a congenital amputee of the right hand. In this show, I will interview other amputees and allow them to tell you their incredible life stories. I'll also feature family members of amputees and others who support the amputee community, all in an effort to discuss the challenges and triumphs of those living with limb loss. So stick around and listen to inspirational stories and find out why we say we're not stumped. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Bolin with the We're Not Stumped podcast and today I am very honored to have two people with me. I got Dan Moses and JJ. And JJ, I don't know your last name, I apologize. Johnson. Oh, that's right, Jennifer Johnson. That's why yeah. you go by JJ. Yes. But uh, very happy to have two people here. I mean, this is fantastic. And not only that, to be able to like tape with people. Like uh, for the last few times I've done the We're Not Stumped podcast, it's been over Zoom. So actually having people live has been, it's quite an honor. So thank you both for taking the time to come out. Well, we're not two Thanks people, we're one and a half. <laughs> This is what makes it so fun, right? All right. All right. All right. That's all right. You got jokes. That's all right. I'm doing a little braid here. I'm going to climb up. That came out so They're wrong. They're working on their material here. You yeah, have right. to delete that. That came out no, so wrong. No, no. It's all good. We're not going to delete it. It's going to be live. So. Awesome. Live. Awesome. <laughs> That's good. That's right. You know what we like to do, though, on the We're Not Stump podcast is that allow people to tell their stories. As we were talking a little earlier, mine's boring. I was born. I have one hand, but I, I would like to have, you know, your stories and, and uh, like Dan, if you don't mind, I, I, I know I know some of yours, but if you don't mind explaining some of that to the listeners, that'd be great. I gotta go first. Yeah. <laughs> you You're next to me, shot. that's why. You were the big uh, shot. You overshadowed me right. and I feel so defeated now. You're the star. I just feel defeated. You should. I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is Dan Moses. Uh, in 2013... Um, just a working man, and I was working at a, um, a medical office building, and you know, just doing my thing. And I came home from work, took my shoes and socks off to relax, and the wife looks at me and she goes, "You have a blister on the bottom of your foot." And I'm like, "Okay." She said, "No, you got a blister on the bottom of your foot." Wow. And I'm like, "Oh, okay." So. I call up my uh, uh, podiatrist to go in, have it seen, looked at, and he went around, trimmed the dead skin off and whatnot. But before I get there, I'm a type 1 diabetic, just to let everybody know. So, feet issues, diabetic, if you're a diabetic, you know. So, ultimately, went into my podiatrist, did some trims. I... I'm a terrible diabetic, wasn't watching my sugars, and it started leading into infections. Um, ultimately, they got pretty bad on the infection. I just started going to school. It was my second day going to school, and I couldn't have any more 13s line up if you're a superstitious person because it was 12, 13, 13. <laughs> so... Along with that, 12, 13, 13, that was Friday the 13th of 2013. And we only have till December, and that's only 12 months. But like I said, if we had 13s, we'd had 13s. <laughs> so, there I am. I'm sick. I'm at school. I'm vomiting. Just, no. it's not good. I get home, tell the wife, we need to go to the hospital. So, we go to the hospital, and sure enough, yep, you got to come in. Get admitted to the hospital. They take off one toe automatically just because where it was and the location. And then they took off all the toes. And then I had the doctor scratching her head. Looks good. No, it doesn't look good. Looks good. Looks great. No, mm, nah, no. We need to take some more. And with all the hemming and hawing, I said, time out. I said, we're not doing anything until I call my podiatrist. Finally, my podiatrist was done with all his rounds. He comes in. He's looking at the charts. He's talking with me. I had my parents on the phone. My dad's former Navy, plus some background in in uh, medicine. So I had him on the phone, and my podiatrist flat out looked at me, and he says, if you're my brother, I would tell you to take the leg. So basically, on... Um, December 27th of 2013, I made a decision to have the leg taken off. 
and it's been a learning experience. Um, I gotta say, in 2013, I'm sure there's online things were you know popping up left and right, but at that point in time, I knew nothing. Mm-hmm. No groups, no YouTubes, no nothing of the sort. So I was kind of on my own island and kind of learning my ways. But fortunately, I had a friend of mine, let's say fortunately, but unfortunately, that she's uh, an above me amputee. And she was kind of giving me insights on things that I'll be experiencing throughout life and getting adjusted and and that really helped me out a lot but then you know little difference between an above knee and below knee mm-hmm. same but different huh the height well it's you know <laughs> one leg not not two not like you <laughs> <laughs> but uh no you know so she helped me out and you know i just progressed on learned a lot on my own from 2013 and Push it up to 2020, and same thing. I was moving from Arizona, from San Diego to Arizona. Got two big gnarly blisters on the bottom wow. of my right foot, and you know, hit repeat all over again. And went in for a surgery here, surgery there. Um, as I was recovering, I got up one time to answer my door. Answered my door at home and then next thing I know I look down and I'm standing in a pool of blood because I literally blew out part of my Achilles tendon but I have neuropathy so I didn't even feel it so back to the hospital I went and then again with the hymns and the haws and then at that point in time I just we're going to take it and I'm going to deal with it and get it figured out and from there as time progressed now I've gotten online, YouTube, um, with the company that I go with for my prosthetics, I've actually become a mentor, and I do have a lot of mentees that I've talked to, including this yo-yo here. I wasn't your mentee. No, but I talked to you, though. You you did. You you did. You were feeling sorry for yourself, and I I took care of that. Hey, there you go. (laughs) So, getting involved with a lot of things, and then... My partner in crime here, Miss JJ, she's helped me out, pointed me in some directions with getting involved mm-hmm. with the CAF, and that's right. Oh, I'm gonna have a Lizzo what, moment. What is CAF? I'm sorry. What does that stand for? Challenge Athletes Foundation. Oh, okay. I'd love to hear more about that. I can't wait it's, to. It's hear pretty more. amazing. They've yeah. actually just um, opened up for a grant about a month ago. We can fill you in on it. Oh, pretty that, soon. That sounds yeah. great. Thank you. And you know, it's interesting, um, this is why I'm trying to give back with the We're Not Some podcast, being able to have these kind of resources online, like your story, your story, it, it means a lot to people, you know, and so thank you, and I really appreciate it, and we're, we're going to talk more, because you, you taught me a lot in the uh, Lively Limbs, which is a, 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 a support group that we get together, we've met a couple times there, so I have some questions based on that, exactly. but I, I don't want to cut you off, are you done with your part of the story? Or are you... I mean, for the most part, you know, I've, you know, you know Grab the bull by the balls, and yeah. I just been off, and yeah. again helping, being a mentor to mentees, helping them out, and then just going to different online groups and then in-person groups, and then sharing and talking and sharing ideas on how to transition from a seat to a chair or mm-hmm. a bed to a wheelchair, or you know, just different stories and different things that to help others you know not saying my way is the only way but if you took a little bit of my way and then sprinkled your own your way on there then as you move forward that you help the next person paying it forward that you could you know it goes on and on and on a whole learning curve that way yeah that's fantastic I agree 100% that's why when I met you at that Lively Limbs and you were you were very vocal uh, helping people during that time and I thought wow this is someone I'd love to have on this show so again thank you I appreciate it no so problem. I'd love to hear your story well gosh he's, oh. he's so much better at telling his than I am mine so um, I got my first blood clot back in 2005 I was 20 I was living in Illinois 24 hours from moving here and I ended up in the emergency room and then in the hospital and had my first blood clot Long story short, I told them they had 24 hours to get me out because I told my kids we were coming here. 
So after a long drive, we made it to Arizona for the next, um, gosh, oh, until 2017. I spent all those years, doctors not listening to me if something was wrong. I couldn't take more than uh, 400 steps a day. It was, you know, I'm 40 years old. I'm a single mom with five kids. You know, it, it was awful. My body had completely started to reroute itself. I was that, and I was completely clotted, it turns out, from the kidneys to the thighs. Um, I was very blessed to go to an amazing vascular surgeon who takes the worst of the worst usually. Um, and he, he did a bifemoral bypass, which is what they call live autopsy. They catch you. Really? Um, yeah. It was supposed to be like a four-hour surgery. Turned into 23. This was in January 2017. Um, it worked great for about eight months. Um, and then it failed. Um, the four hours had turned into 23-hour surgery because my leg had died. So everything worked for about eight months, and then it failed again. And I had to go in, and we had to make the decision to go ahead and have it... Um, Removed, And this was just the one leg at the this time? This was at the time, okay. yeah. Because right now I'm a bilateral above knee amputee. Yes. So at the time, we were just looking at the left leg. You know, um, we still didn't know what was going on. We only knew somebody was finally listening. And um, so I ended up, it was January 8th, I believe. Um, it happened a little sooner than we thought it was going to. And um, I ended up having that leg amputated to left. Then I had ended up on life support and and stuff it was not it was wow. it was not good so finally I got out of there and I got to rehab um, it wasn't one of the best ones they dropped a full bottle of Pantene on my right toe which with my blood clotting my blood was like cement the exact opposite of a hemophiliac um, I they didn't listen sent me home nobody listened um, and about not even a week later um, I was back in the hospital fighting for my life um, it was a total of after everything I was on. I like to tell people at the time, in the last five years, I've been married, divorced. I've had bifemoral bypass. I've been on life support three times and in a coma three times. Um, I was actually in hospice four years ago and was discharged because I was doing so great. Um, it turns out I've got two autoimmune disorders. One of them is called uh, antiphospholipic syndrome. It's catastrophic for me, but not for everybody. And it makes my blood clot. So it's a clotting issue. Um, the other one's called severe Sjogren's. And that's what gives me the most trouble, is my Sjogren's, because it causes a debilitating exhaustion. So it makes it even harder to wear prosthetics and do things, but we keep trying, mm -hmm. you know, two steps back. Um, so they collided, caused neuropathy in the legs, and that's what clotted and ended up everything happening. Well, you know, so, you yeah. said you went through a uh, hospice and you were yeah. obviously very close to death. I guess, you know, you, you, number second one. Second by second. N number one, yeah. I think you lived to give Dan some crap. I can tell that right <laughs> away. But no, and number that story, number two, I think you're here to, to share that story and, and make sure that other people understand what you went through. You, you know, and, and I appreciate that. Um, I'm very blessed. I've got such an awesome team. Yeah. You know, I got Mountain Man here, and you know, my my prosthetist got me to the right people. Great. I've had the right grants and foundations that have, Great. you know, um, I'm a scuba diver now. That's fantastic. Certified, yeah. I, you know, we do all kinds of things. They call her Flipper. Flipper. <laughs> they call her Flipper. And, and excuse my ignorance. Okay. What would what would bring on the blood clot? Like, it, it, was it some of those other things you talked about, or was it just? It's the blood is just so thick. And that's. Was that That's, something you grew up with and didn't know? Yeah, maybe? we didn't realize okay. it. Yeah, okay. yeah. And then eventually they kind of mutated and whatever that meant. And But yeah, they think now that I've had it my whole life. Wow. Um, I have my first kidney surgery at three, so I thought it was my kidneys. I always called it pings and pangs. But I was actually having blood, you know, PEs and DVTs and... You know, at one point, half of my heart had shut down. Wow. It was, they say the only reason I survived, they think, was uh, I'm too stubborn to die. <laughs> and I think you swore my daughter that I would. And they said, we don't, we have no explanation. And again, excuse my ignorance, you it's said okay. PT and DVT. Yeah. Um, there's you. deep vein trombo, okay. you know, the deep vein DVTs okay. and PEs, pulmonary embolisms. Okay. Um, same thing, Biggie, you know. Went, Got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you know, Dan, I understand from what you talked about last Monday and some of your story, not only was it onset by some of the di diabetes, if I'm not mistaken, but also your, 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 your bones are brittle for it. Well, I believe 
the lady that was asking about that, I think she was getting the terminology because mixed up. Because for me, I had osteomyelitis, bone infection. Okay. So anybody diabetics, amputations, osteomyelitis, more than likely. For her, being a woman with brittle, brittle bones, that's more osteomyelitis. Okay. Or osteoporosis. One of those two. I'm not a doctor. Who, I just play one. On. <laughs> one of the two. Just, let's just pick one. Uh. You're the woman. What is it? <laughs> now we got to remember what you said. Like I, mean, I, I have the bones. <laughs> I have no legs. You would. You <laughs> far more qualified than I am for that. <laughs> I love the banter. <laughs> <laughs> what a, well, well, anyway, didn't this we meet in the one of the rooms and I yelled at you for feeling sorry for yourself? Was that you? No. No. Oh, no. sorry. I meant to. It was in my head. <laughs> no. <laughs> You know, when you, when you talk back to that time, yeah. something that during your story that actually came up last Monday during Lively Limbs was the the need to advocate for yourself. Yes. And, and as you were talking, mm -hmm. I, I started to hear some of that. And yeah. it, it, both of you, if you don't mind talking about that a little bit, I'd like to learn Good. more from both of you. Why do I got to go first? <laughs> You're wow. taller. Well, you know, what I'll say, if, if you don't mind, um, I went to the uh, Amputee Coalition. Uh, oh, wow. It was fantastic. And there was a whole track on just yeah. that, yeah. being a self-advocate. I'm a cancer survivor, and I remember going through that myself. And is equally as, yeah. it, again, being a congenital amputee, I didn't have to be an advocate for my amputee, you know, that yeah. my, maybe my parents back in the day. But, I rem but it really did parallel my cancer journey yeah right. but I would like to hear a little bit more from both of you on, on being a, an advocate and making sure that you're getting stuff done you know for well yourself. I mean it, it, I, I think the important thing is not just being an advocate but you have to we think we got it but we don't have it unless we have that you know yeah well I mean I, th I think have. most of the time being an advocate for yourself and along yeah. with having other support people you know your family your friends maybe someone that could possibly be in the medical field or yeah. or in the insurance field or, you know it's something that you know because you know some people i'm rushed to the hospital holy cow yeah. my blood sugar is fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. hmm. my leg is basically black it's rotting off yeah. we're gonna take the <laughs> leg bam yeah. take the leg and then you're stuck going, what the hell do I do now? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that was a little dramatic. Different people have different situations. Sure. But the point is, is now you, you, and that's you have to figure out yeah. your who, what, where, when, and why. And for me, and I should, <laughs> well, I'll get more into that in a little bit, but to figure out your who, what, where, when, and why. You can't just be a wallflower. And, okay, I got my leg cut off, I'm in a wheelchair, and now I'm gonna go sit in a corner, I'm gonna cry myself to sleep, and and poor, poor, pitiful me. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't like to feel sorry for myself. The next thing is, is what can I do? What can you do? What should I do, you know? Okay, I'm in a wheelchair. Okay, well, I went through physical therapy, and now I know how to move from a chair, from my wheelchair to a chair. I can go from my wheelchair to the bathroom to handle my business. Every little step, procedure, <laughs> every, every, every little, every every little thing that you do. One step at a time, yeah. Every step matters. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, no pun, no pun intended. Oh, you so meant it. <laughs> you know you did. But it, it's just the fact that you know. You're right, though. You, you can't take. I mean, you just can't shrivel up and die in in, in the corner. You got. You're right. To go after. And, and I was thinking yeah. too. Part of it was when you get some of the diagnosis coming to you, whether it be from yeah. the doctor or or a prosthesis. You don't. It's okay to question them and what they're saying. And Absolutely. I think that was it some of the things okay. that I learned. And that's something where a lot of us grew up, we didn't question. Yeah. We took what they told us to take, we, you know. Doctor said X, Y, Z, yeah. and it was like, okay. They it. even wanted to send me to a medical psychologist. It was in my head. You should have. I know, right? I woke up, he's <laughs> like, do you think it's still fibromyalgia? I said, I don't think it matters. Wow. But, you know, one of the things, and we're talking about advocating for ourselves. Sure. 
uh, one of my huge defining moments, because we can do hard time or easy time, but we're still going to do the time. So we might as well make the best of it. Sure. Um, but I remember the surgeon who did this, you know, helped me. I, he went to a dark place. He took it very personally from what I understand. And I saw him later after, you know, I was getting st- staples and stitches, everything removed. And he, he, he felt really bad and he apologized to me. I'm like, why? He goes, you asked me to help you walk again. I said, yeah, I didn't ask you to save my legs. He said, help me walk again. And that's what you've given me the opportunity to do. You know, but I think a lot of the doctors and stuff get stuck in this, it's out of the box. Yeah. Things are happening at younger ages. What happened to me shouldn't happen until I was in my 90s, from what they tell me. It didn't have to be this way. Wow. Um, but you have to advocate. You have to be your, you know, and if you can't, find somebody who can. Great point. That's a very you good know? point, yes. Yeah, and you have to find that one person, to be honest. Sure. I, I didn't, I grieved but to be honest, it never bothered me about the legs because they had been useless for so long that I wasn't living. Got it. Um, so that, you know, that never bothered me. It just was what it was, you know, and I've had such a great support team. Figured it um, out. Figured it out, no, yeah. No, I figured it out. Oh, what'd you figure out? That's why you don't wear clean socks. No, I know. <laughs> I'm telling you, the dryer keeps taking my socks. <laughs> Um, but no, it's that. And then, you know, not just medically though, you have to, well, to finish the medical, you have to be okay with saying, Hey doc, I don't feel like I'm being listened to. Yes. Okay, doc. Hey, would you note my, 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 um, my file that I said this and you said no, they're probably going to change real quick. Um, and yeah. yeah, if they're not listening, go to somebody who is, That's keep going. Excellent or, point. Yeah. Or that, you know. Sometimes, you know, doctors are, you know, doctors are doctors and yeah. they're pretty cut and dry, you know, direct to the point. You know, yes, they've got a large patient load, but at times you got to grab the, yeah. grab the doc, literally, or not yeah. literally, but doc, give it to me in people language, not medical terms on oh, that's what a great point. Yeah. this meant and what that meant, you know, yeah. for case in point. The osteomyelitis. What exactly is osteomyelitis? Can you? Yes. Can you? Until they get it right, say it. Or, you know, as you stated, you know, I don't know the cancer that you had, but, you know, hey, doctor, you know, I've got pancreatic cancer or whatever, but we'll use the big words, the big names, whatever (laughs) they use rather than breaking it down. It's pancreatic, it's skin cancer, it's this, that, or the other thing. And then, you know, so that you can understand and digest. And that also gives you a little bit of term that, you know, okay, pancreatic cancer. I could look that up online. Okay, well, yes, we'll all be the Doogie Howlers and look up and diagnose ourselves on what it is. But we know 99% of the time it's wrong. But at least it's giving you a peace of mind to say, okay, the doctor said I have pancreatic cancer. According to this, this is saying something different but similar, but now I kind of understand. Yeah, I like the way you're saying that too because it's certainly not coming across as anti-doctor. I mean, you had a great story about how yours cared for you so much, but it's just being it, arming yourself with some intelligence yeah. too and trying to figure out some of these things. And it's okay to question. It's okay to ask, ask questions. It's good to have a notebook or an some, iPad yeah. or something. Let's take some notes. And we got to hold them accountable. Like, I have, I have an amazing, amazing um, doctor that works with the, you know, Sjogren's and the APLS. Um, I'd met her when I was in the hospital on one of my things, and she made a promise to my mom that she would find out what was wrong with me. Oh, wow. Now I got out of the hospital, everything's going, you know, and she's like, I, I don't know. And I got, I got mad. I said, no, you don't get to do that. You made a promise. You made a promise. Figure it out. And by the time I came back, she figured it out. That's Whatever just... happened with the shrink? He wouldn't take you. <laughs> Sorry. We tried. We did. Well, we I did. Know about we, but but you know, tried. and it's it's Don't not just back. the medical. It's every area of our lives. Um, I fought the city of Phoenix. I was thrown off that bus so many times because they wanted to tie my wheelchair down. I said, "Not going to happen." And eventually, we were able to rewrite this. Oh, I want to hear more. I, I, okay. What is? Yeah. I okay. Love so. This is one of my biggest pet peeves about 
the city of Phoenix has a lot of great options for sure. us as adaptive folks. You know, I don't say disabled because that's what you know Starbucks does Handy. to the Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> Handy capable. I prefer adaptive. But yes, everybody has, you know. There is. So yeah. when it first happened, my good friend of mine, Jeffrey Cook, explained it very well. You know, when, when somebody has an amputation, the family has a million questions. But the amputee, but a few. My biggest, how am I going to make money? How am I going to take care of my kids? And how am I going to get where I need to go? Yeah. Well, I tried the medical transport, and we all know how well that works in the state of Arizona. So then I that tried the city bus. Though. It, sh- it is, and it's sad. It's sad the way it's treated. But mm. the city bus, okay, we'll do transportation. My kids taught me how to take the buses. But they had this insane idea that because we're in a wheelchair, our wheelchairs have to be tied to the floor and strapped down for our safety. And I'm like, no. Yeah. I'm, you know, you, and I mean, and they threw me and my kids off. Oh, it, wow. not, it didn't matter. And we kept doing it. And we kept doing it. And finally, um, the mayor's office listened. And they didn't get involved because they can't tell them what to do. But they reconsidered. And they rewrote the policy. So you have the right to not be tied down on a city bus. Congratulations on making that happen. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. Uh, talk I about being an advocate. That. There you go. But you know, it's because I had people like Mountain Man and, you know, I don't know, you said you had cancer uh, yeah. if you met Matthew Brewer. Um, he had cancer, which led to an addiction, which uh, led to a heroin addiction. And long story short, he had overdosed and passed out. And his le- he ended up losing both of his legs oh. above knee. He, he's now... Um, Mono skier doing amazing, Great. awesome, and love. He is. She's just. He's so. You know. But we've got him, and there's somebody for everybody. Yeah, that's that's a great. Part if of you don't story. have answers, reach out. Yes. Because somebody has what you have. I have one percent of the people have what I have, and even one percent of that have what I the what I specifically have. But I have met so many people. You know, it's like, and they've turned out to have something I had. And it's like, you know. And it's great to have that support group, right? Exactly. you got to have it. I don't yeah. care what anybody thinks. Whether oh, it's I, just swinging a bat or yeah. scuba diving or camping. Yeah. Or just, you know. Well, like Monday. And the Mondays at Lively Limbs that I met you, you, you. The way you were able to articulate around the sockets and your prosthetics yeah. definitely helped other people in that room. And, you know, like I, I didn't know some of the terminology. And here I am, you know. <laughs> been a amputee all my whole life but um it's been a long time since i wore a prosthetic though so i will say that but you know giving back that that's something that you talk about quite a bit and you, you talked about it earlier but how what other ways do you try to give back i mean any any way that i can i mean i must <laughs> i'm by no means a saint please no, I am by no means a saint. Well, we were going to saint you. Now, I guess. So much no, for that We're not going to do that, yes. Well, you know. No, but you can rock star status, man. That's okay. you by the king this time. <laughs> oh, hey. Hey, now. But it's all good. I yeah, mean, you it know. is. But you, if nothing else, sometimes just being an example just, and walking yeah. around and having a good attitude, like I can tell both of you have, is all that's needed sometimes, right? right? I mean, yes, it is. People don't expect that of us. Yeah. Sometimes. I think my defining, I had so many defining moments, but a big one was when I first got home, I couldn't figure out how I was going to do anything. I got angry because nobody was figuring it out. But I, I, this is one of the biggest lessons I've learned, and it, it just has really helped oh. me learn. Bing. Go ahead. What? No, no. What? I got, I got to kind of circle back. You got to circle back? I do. Okay. Hold it right there for I'm a minute. telling you. Just a minute. Okay. 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 <laughs> so anyway, sorry, I totally forgot what I was saying. One of the biggest lessons you learned. Yes. What was the anger. Mm. Um, I was listening to a YouTube um, from a guru, Sen, Sen Guru, a great guy, a lot of great advice, and he was talking about how anger is from within, not without. Oh, that's interesting. And I thought about that. I'm like, huh, okay. So if it's from within, how, how does this work? So I thought about this for about a week because I study meditation, yoga, kasnuki, and the scuba diving. And I'm like, how does this work? How is anger my tool in from within me? So I thought about it and it's right. I said, okay, so if it is, how do I use it? If it's a tool, how do I use it? And I figured, like a mixer. <laughs> you know, you have the right amount of anger to accomplish the right task at the right speed. <laughs> and when you learn to control it that way from inside, you know, and it's right. And it was the first time I understood, you don't have the power to make me angry. I've allowed myself to be angry. Wow. 
it was a, a, I've had so many defining moments from so many people. And that was huge. It was. It, it made a difference. Very well said. You know, and it, it enabled me when me and him talked about, you know, some him kind of feeling, if you don't mind me sharing, a little just not angry, but unresolved. Sure. I think would be a good word. Sure. Just yeah. something there. You don't know what it is, sure. you know? Hey, you know? Yeah. Hey. And we talked, like, go to the batting cage. Let's, you know, you don't always have to know and say the words. Interesting. And in our community, we bond so fast because we yeah. can look at people and we know the trauma you've been through. So, yeah. So. Wow. What, what was your aha moment? What was your aha moment? Yours, ping. Ping. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, That's ping. fantastic. But I ping. Want to hear this you ping. Pinged. All right, I here, pinged you. Here's my ping okay. to the pong. Ping to the pong. <laughs> when I started, when I said you. 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 Yes. So you, you had your aha uh-huh. moment. Yeah, I was it blessed. Was I've had a lot of you. aha moments. Oh, I think so, I know. Okay. Yeah. So when it starts with you for everything, so it starts with you. Yeah, it does. Way they can, the, doc, the doctors and nurses can save us. The PT can teach us how to walk. Prosthetists can pr- give us the perfect socket. But it's up to us. We have the responsibility to do stuff with that. Yes. You Going know? back Very to well you. Said. Yeah. Yeah. It all falls back to us. So... I, you were talking about prosthetics earlier about uh-huh. with yourself, and yes. I, you must be going through the journey right now, or or have you decided to not use them? All the above. No, okay. no. Okay. Um, I had um, a, a yoga guy from uh, Mount Madonna give me some great advice. Don't be in such a hurry to get where you're going. You forget to meet yourself where you're at. Hmm. And I love just being comfortable with me, whether I'm trying to wear them or not. Sure. Uh, for me, the Sjogren's, this, um, the debilitating exhaustion, that I get from my autoimmune disorder Sjogren's, it makes it hard. Sometimes I go into episodes and I'll lay there for a month. Then I got to stall it all over again. So, yeah. Um, Dan is live tweeting this, right? No. I know, yeah. I, no, no, I know right? I'm just kidding with you. But No, the reason, hold on. Don't I'm hold telling on. your wife. Oh, please do. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, it's, you know, that's. How long did it take you to, to get certified in scuba diving? I am so blessed, and I hope I hope you don't mind me. Uh, no, um, you can't miss a fantastic So normally, story. there's this. Can I tell you about the agency that did it? Okay, Absolutely. so there's a magazine called Amplitude, Living oh, with yes, Amplitude. I've heard of it, yeah. Okay, well they had done an article on me, Ooh, and I read that. then I had wanted to do this scuba diving. A friend of mine had said that um, I'd said we've been friends for so long we'd stand before Christ together one day, and he goes, "Oh, you don't get it. I made too many bad decisions." I'm like, "Give me a break. It's not that we can't. It's how can we." So I came up with this amazing idea. I was gonna to learn to scuba dive because he already scuba dives. And there are these statues, there's three of them in the ocean throughout the world. One's in like Florida, one, well maybe, but there's Florida, there's Fact checkers are gonna check it. They are, they're like, oh, should this still there? Yeah. Uh, but it's called Christ in the Abyss. She's crazy, remember that. She's still Dude, I am like... a double amputee above the knee. I can survive anything and what I can't, they can replace. <laughs> you love that about me. So, um, but I wanted to dive to all three of them. Mm-hmm. And just kind of be there. That's what started the whole diving thing. Mm-hmm. Um, word got around from Milvet. They called me about, you know, um, just different options. And they told me about this place, uh, Randy Lung, uh, with Good Dive Guardians. They were started a few years ago because when COVID first kind of hit, um, a good friend of Randy Lung, the founder, um, his friend was a um, uh, first responder. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that's when we didn't really pay attention very much and didn't understand how to help first responders. So he created this whole Dive Guardian program. Uh, It's for uh, first responders and or vets. And they have a whole program between biofeedback all the way up to scuba diving because scuba diving has been proven to reduce PTSD by 85%. Wow. And the effects can last anywhere from four to six weeks. Wow. And it's just amazing. It's the first time in my life everything made sense. I've never been able to feel direction. You know, I'm from the country. You got to go to the smiley face bar and take a left, you know. But I understood direction under the water. Be all right. Because right? <laughs> you're my best friend. That's you're fantastic. Best yeah. Friend. I want to look for that. So, but it, it, normally it's a six weeks program. But uh, I went up for the week. He trained me in the pool for two days. And then he took me out to Catalina Island. Um, which was the start of the funny joke I was going to tell you about how, you know, this big great white, you know, because I don't have that interesting of a story. But you anyway, much more but thank you for, let, yeah, Dive Guardians, uh, Randy Lung, um, first responders and or vets. He helps 
helps. And congratulations them. on having an article written about you. That's, that's quite you. an accomplishment. So instead of well, finding Nemo, we were finding JJ? Finding JJ. Yeah. I look like a drowning seal. You know, it's so neat, though, because Hanger Clinic surprised me with a pair of prosthetic fins. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> our, 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 Shout our, out to Hanger. <laughs> right? Yeah, very it, nice. it was really neat, you know. It, it was... It was a moment, you know, when you first become an, an amputee. That was you my do prosthetist all. that came up with the flippers for you. My. I had him first with Jillian. He w- he was at my clinic before he went out to you. You scared my. him so bad he had to go across town again. Dude, my prosthetist <laughs> first. <laughs> but, but yeah. I'm, that's that's, that's, that's Thank awesome. You, so right. what were you looking up, if you don't mind me asking? What yes, I was looking up. Looking it was going to be some kind of proverb, I think. This is Yeah, Who this knows? is going to be. This is going to be very well, interesting. Well, at least you think so. He couldn't remember Iron Maiden. <laughs> so, well. So anyway, a friend of mine who happens to be a Buddhist monk, when I first lost my first leg. I'm a reverend. Oh, well. He's <laughs> Anyway, he... Uh, um, back when I had Facebook, he had put a quote on there, and it and it really hit me. It says, "When faced with any difficulties in life, resolve it by the following four steps: face it, accept it, deal with it, then let it go." Hmm. And that was by Master Shing, which was, I mean, pretty much what we had to do. And I found some others. And it says, "Failure." Will never overtake me if I, if my determination to succeed is stronger than failure. But did you know you've already survived 100% of the hardest days of your life? All right. Good way to put it. That's true. And then the next one is you learn more from failure than from success. Don't let it stop you. Failure blinds. Failure, fi- failure blinds character. And that's from unknown. Oh, I said that. No, I'm kidding. He said that. It wasn't me. Did sure. you know those who danced were once thought to be insane by those who couldn't hear the music? Wow. Boy, this, look at you getting all This is off. just, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm a walking refrigerator yeah. magnet. <laughs> <laughs> so, See, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, that's why her head shrinker is letting her out a little bit. Kind of let her unwind a little. <laughs> Actually, it's time we tell you. It's is it? you. Yes, this is the intervention it's, now. Yeah, intervention this time. is the intervention. No. <laughs> no. It is. It is. No. It is. We said yeah. So how tall are you? Because I know I'm 43 inches. I'm 5 foot 20 inches. With the legs. I'm 5 foot 20 inches. You know I'm dyslexic with numbers. You are so mean to me. Okay, Mike, what's 5 foot 20 inches? 6'4"? Uh, 6'4". Six four? Six four. Yeah, you're like 6'4". Right? Boy, the math here in the United States is That's great. terrible. I didn't, I, they said there was no math, and this is my podcast. Look, <laughs> they said they were going to switch to metric. I was prepared. Yes. It's, 5 foot know, 20. Right? Uh, <laughs> how many inches are in a foot? 12. Well, okay, what's 12 times 5? 60. Okay. And <laughs> so 60 is 5 foot. So oh. I'm, so I'm Five foot, uh-huh. twenty inches. Uh, okay. So that makes it. I'm not gonna go there. No. That's too late. But yeah. did you know what everybody was doing? They're figuring it out right now. Kung it's Fu six fighting. foot everybody eight was inches. Kung Fu fighting. Six oh. foot eight inches. Ish. Wow. Oh. I'm not going to say a word. Ish. I'm not gonna say anything. You just sometimes open that door. Just not gonna say nothing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um, let me ask you this: so the, the, obviously for <laughs> for you, and not me, but there's a before and after, right? So what's what's your after like? Because I, when I see you two talk and and your, your joy and you know your your senses yeah. of humor, there's obviously an after, and I think it's important for people to understand that. So yeah. Well, I mean, I'll be honest. At, at times, you know, it's kind of like a light bulb. You know, you're on, you're on. You're off, you're off. And when you're out amongst friends and you can tell jokes and you can laugh and and have a good time, but then when the lights go off and you go home and it's quiet, sometimes you take that step into your own head and then when you get into your own head, you all know what it's like because you had a bad day at work, you're in your head. You may have lost... A loved one, you're in your head. Something happened, you're in your head. And then you can think worst scenarios, good scenario, whatever. But the point is, is that you're in your head and the squirrels are going. 
Yeah. And it's just, and it bugs me. And I mean, I like to do a lot of things, but at times when I'm at home, I just kind of curl up into my corner, in which now I'm, you know, as I'm telling other people that don't get into that corner and don't box yourself in, here I am doing the same thing. Well, it's okay to remind yourself of that, though. And then you, exactly. So yeah. you got to do that. So therefore, I try to push myself to get out more often, yeah. meet up with you, come to this podcast, yeah. talk to JJ, call her at 11 o'clock at night when she's. When yeah, but don't sit at 1 o'clock, don't send me no pictures of uh, Johnny Walker. Well, that's, that's. I didn't know where you're going with that, but thank you. I'm yeah. not Johnny Walker. <laughs> you like Johnny Walker? No, you. Isn't that what was on that dining table that night? Yeah. You like blew up my phone in the middle of the night with pictures of a liquor bottle on your table. Yeah, nice. dude, I was saying yeah. Happy New Year's to everybody. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah. See? <laughs> you got to be special when you get. And then also another thing, when I call my friends, I don't know if anybody's going to be watching this one. On their birthday. They can't, I'm here. When I call my friends on their birthday, yeah. I sing happy birthday to them. I sing wow. you happy birthday in the courtyard. I know, but you I mean, you but when you're that. a select few that gets the phone call from me, that's because I, I care. I know. And I care. I got and your birthday written thing, down. I'm, you know? I'm going to be calling you on right. yours. Yeah. You would talk to her quick about uh, other resources. Sure. And I would love to be able to tell you about a couple. Oh, please. If you don't mind. No, no, no. no um, you probably heard of most of them. I there's, may not have, so. Okay. So there's CAF. They provide a Challenged Athlete Foundation. Wow. They've got a grant open that started earlier this month, and it goes until November 1st. They provide a couple of different grants um, for individuals. Some are like um, equipment. Yeah. If you need like um, a special bike, sure. Or uh, you maybe you're you, you want to do archery or something. Um, they just provide adaptive equipment for grants. You apply. Very it's nice. a whole process. Don't so they also help with prosthetics too. They can, yeah. If you want a running blade, that's on the list. Oh, very nice. So yeah. you can apply. See, you know. Yeah. And, and you can do that every three years. Is that a, a national organization? Is that Arizona? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's I, national. I, I, it, I think they do worldwide too. If I remember, oh, I could be nice. wrong. But I believe so. They have Angel City Games in uh, L.A. Um, at UCLA every, well, up until COVID hit. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. You know, you can go there, see a lot of the stuff and equipment. People, you know, qualifying for the Olympics and that different things. That is very nice. Yes. And then we've got, um, so that's Challenge Ashley Foundation, CAF. Okay. Then we have a K2 Adventure Foundation, uh, near and dear to my heart. Um, within 24 hours of me coming home, Kaya Noah... Um, I don't know if you know Kai and Noah. He's a quad amp, and he actually climbed a mountain. Wow. K2 Adventure Foundation helped him climb the mountain. And he, um, within 24 hours of finding out, I didn't have any ramps at home. I had ramps at my door. That's... Um, it was amazing. And they've been with me through the whole thing. They even provided a... They removed medical and or educational barriers. The, uh, the next year, they gave me a $1,500 um, grant towards my education wow. and stuff that I was studying. Great. They're just, you know, and then there's for mothers who've experienced a trauma, uh -huh. uh, Mother's Grace out of Scottsdale. Okay. Um, they're amazing. And yeah, they're, they're all worldwide. They can be found online. Excellent. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, reach out or something. But yeah. Reach out. So do you have a website? Do you, when you say that, if you don't mind me asking, do you have, do you have is it social media, <laughs> social media or again? Um, I'm on Instagram. Well, okay. I'm on. And if you don't want to share that. No, it's fine. okay. I don't mind. Um, my, my main following is on a TikTok, but okay. uh, it, across the board, it's A-Z-J-E-N-N-B-U-N-N-Y-X-O-X-O, -N 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 A-Z okay. Jed Bunny. All right, I'm going to look you up. So go Especially ahead, look me on, up. Especially uh, on TikTok. Yeah, he's not on Facebook anymore. He, he's like permanently banned. Oh, I can But he's imagine. on TikTok and Instagram, too. Oh, I'll have to yeah, look you on Yeah. Or, you know, you can, a lot of the prostitutes know this. Yeah. You know, go yeah. to the groups. Leslie Green with Hanger. She has um, support groups yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, that. Christy Arthur, too. And Christy Arthur, yeah. Where you don't have to go to Hanger. No. Larry, Larry Barnum um, with um, Fishing Veterans okay. um, of America out in Oregon. One of the first people I met, and he said to me, first words out of his mouth was, hey, amp sister, hey, amp friend, family. Um, and that's how I greet my amputee community, because yeah. it reminds us we're a family. You yes. can ask any of us, and if we yeah. don't know, we'll find out. Yes. Right. 
So you know, yeah. if you don't mind, I'd like to have some of that yeah. information. So when I put this live, um, all those links yeah. are available on the YouTube page. So thank you so definitely, much. I definitely, definitely. I'd love to be able to share that yeah. and some resources. Yeah. Every little thing's going to be all right. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, with attitudes like both of yours, I, is, there's no doubt. I mean, it, seriously, though, I, attitude and, and, and positive thinking, it, it means so much. I think we can both all agree on that. It is. It is. I And I made a conscious decision. I was going to say yes. I was going to, you know, the first time I saw Yvonne Lane, profess, you know, she's a double amp, and she was a professional swimmer. And I had to be a swimmer. You know, I wanted to be a swimmer. and It was a disaster, but... You know, and, and then you see Matthew yeah. doing yoga. Yeah. And I wanted to learn yoga, which I have an awesome downward dog. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you... I like that. <laughs> you just, you know, you... Norma, she's a double amp just like me up in yeah. Tucson. And she's professional. You know, she's a golfer. She yeah. does... Wow. It's... We're just so blessed. Reach out. See, don't be afraid to these people you think, you know, that are... Yeah. Apparently, you know, Christy Gardner, she's out on the other side of the country doing her amazing stuff reach out to them send them a message if, if happy they have to time get, yep. yeah i've never known them to not take a moment for yes. a fellow am yeah because like you said it is a community yeah. you know and that was one of the things again you know being a congenital amputee i may yeah. not have been part of the community I, I guess i was always a part but didn't realize it was <laughs> there because it, yeah exactly but now that i'm like really dedicating my life to try to yeah. do what i can to help yeah. It is a great community, you know. Meeting people yeah. like you two is just—it it makes my day. Now tomorrow I'll, I'll be I, over it. Same for us. I'm kidding. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, same for us. We're we're really. So blessed. you're the presence of a rock star and a queen, so it's all good. Guys, we are... know who the queen is. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh no, I'm not Mercury. talking about the band. It's okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, or Elizabeth. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Pat Mountain Man. Well, I want to thank you both for. Spend the time. I mean, so we get to thank Tallison Library for allowing us to be here because they, they gave us this room. Thank you so much for thank allowing you. us to do that. But both of you took time out of your day and you drove quite a ways to get here. Dan was only like six minutes, he said. Remember you told me that yesterday. But thank you for doing that. Because in all honesty, you know, to get together and talk this frank about these kind of you know, topics yeah. doesn't happen all the time. So thank you both for doing that. I'd, I'd clap, but see, there's where my jokes come in. Here, we got you. We'll clap with <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, roll There right. we go. We got there. There you go. See, oh, there we go. Wow, right? finally able to do it. Thank you both. Thank you for having us. Oh, we you appreciate you. You know, I, if you think of things, um, mm -hmm. you know, during the next few weeks, or something, we can get back together again and do it again if you guys wouldn't mind. Yeah, I think that'd be. Yeah. 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 Well, at least they I'll bring the garden gnome. Yes. He yeah, upset. I didn't bring my, I have a garden gnome that's the same height as me in my living room. <laughs> He was upset awesome. I didn't bring it. <laughs> you should have done that. Uh, see, I'm the type I would. Yeah. I, I do tend Liar. to live out loud. Well, you, have that, you have that great attitude. Liar. Liar what? <laughs> You're not going to bring it. I will bring it next time. No. Okay, there we go. I'm, I will bring the garden gnome next right. time. Okay, you heard well, it. That, see, that you heard it, and there will yep. be a next time. <laughs> there we go. So thank you so much for tuning in to the We're Not Stuck Podcast. You. Thank you. All right, all right. Hosted by Mike Boland. If you want to be a guest on the program, reach out to Mike at his email address, mike at mikeboland.com. This podcast is produced by One Hand Man Productions. If you are looking to start your podcast, go to onehandmanproductions.com.